I was laying on the bed and he was laying with me and he was crying and I had just tried it all and he just was not having it. And I just like lifted my hand as I'm laying on my bed and just like, Lord, do you see me? Do you see me because I need you right now. I am at the end of my rope. <laughs> Father, just give me supernatural strength. And as I said that, I had verses come to me. Um, my power is made perfect in your weakness. Um, your grace is sufficient for me. And so um, those verses really encouraged me <laughs> through that. But that's kind of how I get through my day. And then sometimes, you know, you got to drink a coffee. Sometimes you got to lock yourself in the bathroom with the Reese's peanut butter cup. And um, sometimes you just got to put them all in the van and go for a drive, you know. <laughs> Jamie if you're new if you are new then don't forget to subscribe down below so we can get to know each other a little bit better I've um, filmed some videos that will be up over the next couple months and so I'm just I'm feeling good that I'm kind of back kind of back in the swing of things that is until Ingrid's born and you know everything gets shifted again so I did a pregnancy update and um, I mentioned that I had asked four questions over on my Instagram and these are all regarding my pregnancy and so I wanted to sit down and answer them for you kind of in a dedicated video all right for those of you guys that are new I am 30 weeks pregnant right now currently um, by the time you guys watch this I might be a little bit further along though depending on what my upload schedule looks like but as of right now I'm 30 weeks pregnant with baby number four um, I had a miscarriage between my third and this baby so it's technically baby number five but this is my fourth pregnancy making it this far all right the first question is I'm curious how or if this pregnancy feels much different I know you've mentioned that this may be the last one and I only have two little girls but I've never felt like either pregnancy was my last one curious how that would be I don't technically like have this overwhelming feeling that this is my last pregnancy like I don't think it feels any different um, I just feel like I don't want to be pregnant anymore I just feel like I've had four babies in five years and I'm just I'm done being pregnant I feel like you know and I also feel like um, I'm kind of maxed out as far as I've reached my limit as far as being able to um, be there emotionally and physically and mentally just be there for my kids um, I don't I feel like if I have more kid, more kids than I have right now I'm sure that I would figure out a way to do it but it it feels overwhelming to me to think about that if I'm just being candid someone else might have nine or ten kids and be able to totally rock it out and individually be there for all of their kids for me, I feel like um, having Ingrid and then I have Jude, Ezra, and Fiona. I will have a full quiver, you know? So, um, so yeah, I don't feel like I have this majestic feeling, but I just have kind of, I don't know, I just kind of have a piece that it's my last baby. We're not really sure as far as like what measures will be taken. I don't know. I'm only 28, so I don't know. All I know is that right now I just feel like... I just feel like this is, I just feel done, you know what I'm saying? All right, the next question is, what type of birth are you hoping for? Birth center, home birth, hospital. We are going to the same birth center that I had my last two sons, Ezra and Jude, at. It is actually inside of a hospital, but it is not a traditional labor and delivery. It is an alternative birth center. So they've got queen beds and big giant baths. Um, I go through midwives. We have all the same hospital care though. We have nurses and um, people that are coming in. Doctors are there as well, but I'm cared for by my midwives. And so that is the same birth that I had with my boys. Um, I actually had water births with both of them and I'm not sure if I will do that again with Ingrid, but that is the same place that I'm gonna be having her. Do you think you're, you will want to have your other kiddos present at Ingrid's birth? Definitely not my boys. I have a three, he'll be four. Ezra will be four when Ingrid's born, or almost four, depending on when she comes. She's due on his birthday, November 6th. And Jude is two. And so I definitely don't think my boys will be there. Um, my kids are all very sensitive. They're all very sensory. They, they, have, they can be like um, overstimulated easily. 
and they're very affected by their environment. And so that being said, seeing mom in a lot of pain and um, even though it's a natural thing, they're so little that I just, um, I would have a hard time focusing on what I needed to do knowing that they were upset or that they didn't understand. And I really wouldn't want um, them to just feel like that and be unsure, you know what I mean? However, for Fiona, that has been something that I've considered. She is, she just loves Ingrid already. She's so attached to this pregnancy and to her sister. I think she would probably be okay. I think it would be a little bit um, nerve wracking to her to see me in pain. Of course, if we chose to do that, then we would definitely prep her and have her watch birth videos and have her like as prepared as we could for that, but I'm not sure. I just, I've kind of gone back and forth. She's very attached to me. She likes to be with me all the time. She likes to know what's going on and feel involved and feel included. And so I think that if she got to be there, I think it would make her feel very special. And I think that there would be an even more of a special bond that she would feel toward her sister if she got to be at her sister's birth. So we'll have to see. I'm praying about it. I'm talking with John about it and um, I'll keep you guys posted. What things do you want to do differently this time around? I'm due with my first on November 11th, so hearing about previous experiences is always interesting. As far as my birth goes, I don't really think there's anything I really would like to do different. I've kind of always entered into my births going, um, I want to go natural, I have the intention of doing everything I can and I trust my midwives and my husband, but God forbid anything were to happen, if something serious happened and they needed to do a C-section and take me over to the OR, I would, be, I, I would totally be there because I wouldn't want to risk my life or my baby's life. All right, the next question is, how do you manage one-on-one -on -one time with each kid or how do or will you handle stressful days with the kids? How do I handle one-on-one -on -one time with my kids? I don't get the opportunity for that so much right now during the daytime because they're all so little. I do try to have one-on-one -on -one time with Fiona because she is just a little bit more attached to me and a little bit more sensitive to that right now in the stage that she's in. And sometimes that just looks like having her come sit on the couch with me in the morning time when I'm drinking my coffee and kind of connecting with her and having my arm around her um, and having kind of those moments throughout the day. And then of course, I'll take her with me if I gotta go grocery shopping or um, if I gotta go run to the post office, I might take Ezra or Jude or, you know, like just kind of finding time to take my kids with me or spend that time with them. John is really good at doing that. There's a fly and it is flying around like crazy. It's difficult, it is hard right now and that is why um, I just, I don't know if we're gonna have more kids because it's already difficult for me to really um, engage in that one-on-one -on -one time right now, granted their ages, but I just try to find time to make them feel seen and loved and heard at nighttime. Each of them get cuddles and get to be laid with before bedtime so they get to feel like they're connecting. As far as how do I handle stressful days, gosh, I feel like I've touched on this in a lot of different videos, but prayer, I just pray Oh, I'm just praying. I um, When was it? I was trying to get Jude down for a nap earlier today and he was just not having it and I needed time to breathe. Like, do you guys ever feel me? Like, you need your kid to take a nap or you need them to have quiet time because you mentally need that. I was laying on the bed and he was laying with me and he was crying and I had just tried it all and he just was not having it. And I just like lifted my hand as I'm laying on my bed and just like, Lord, do you see me? Do you see me because I need you right now? I am at the end of my rope. <laughs> Father, just give me supernatural strength. And as I said that, I had verses come to me. Um, my power is made perfect in your weakness. Um, your grace is sufficient for me. And so, um, those verses really encouraged me <laughs> through that. But that's kind of how I get through my day. And then sometimes, you know, you gotta drink a coffee. Sometimes you gotta lock yourself in the bathroom with the Reese's peanut butter cup. And um, sometimes you just gotta put them all in the van and go for a drive, you know? <laughs> Out of all your pregnancies, which one was the easiest and why? And then which was the most difficult and why? I think my easiest pregnancy was probably Ezra, my second, because I'd already gone through a first pregnancy and so I wasn't as nervous, 
but I only had Fiona to take care of. Now granted, she was really little, so it wasn't like a cakewalk, but I only had one to take care of. And then my most difficult would definitely be this pregnancy with Ingrid. I just, I've got three kids to take care of. I feel like having four babies in five years, uh, my body, I just am tired and things are sore. I was the sickest. I'm the most tired <laughs> and I have the most responsibilities on me as far as I've got three other kids to take care of. We're homeschooling. So yeah, I think definitely this one <laughs> has been my most difficult. I know you mentioned that you didn't find out the gender when you were pregnant with Fiona, but you did with all your other kids. What made you decide to find out or not find out with each one? With Fiona, we didn't find out because it was our first baby and we didn't like, not that we, ca we care this time, but we just didn't care. It was our first baby and we had nothing. So I really wanted to have a baby shower where I would get neutral stuff that I could use through all my pregnancies. And I just wanted the surprise. I had no idea what to expect during pregnancy. I had, didn't really know what to expect during labor and delivery. And so I just was like, you know, why why not? Just We'll just have a surprise for the gender as well. And it was really, really fun. We did decide to find out with the rest of our kids. Mostly because I liked the idea of preparing our children for it and I also liked the idea of actually feeling a little bit more prepared as far as having things for them clothes-wise and stuff goes. Just because I already have kids to take care of as well and so if I can like prepare ahead of time, do what I need to do to mentally prepare and then also prepare my kids, maybe come up with a name, things like that. Um, I just, I liked doing that for my last three. We start